is not the same as being anxious, uh, is not the same as being an anxious person. In other words, being anxious is not the same as being an anxious person. Because then we got some people out there who are really over the anxious. Having a habit of being anxious continuously, regardless of the situation, is a problem that interferes with a, with a person's ability to fully function in a healthy, wholesome way. Perhaps you know someone who others describe as a nervous wreck. They seem to be anxious about everything. They are anxious even when things are going good because they are anxiously awaiting the next bad thing to happen. What do y'all like that? So there's something good in I can't stay this way. I know something bad won't happen. It's got to. It's just the way my life goes. It'd be a great love speaking to existence. It won't happen. Amen. Amen. And the truth is, this person may be a very nice person, but few people enjoy being around someone who is anxious and nervous most of the time. They seem to be miserable and can make others miserable with their anxiety. Misery loves company. So the saying goes, right? All right. What is anxiety and where does it come from? Ready? There are several basic types of anxiety. Two types are specific anxiety and general anxiety. Specific anxiety and general anxiety. These are sometimes referred to as state and trait anxiety. See how those get heavy, right? But grab what you grab the meat, spit out the bone. State and trait anxiety. Specific anxiety is the result of thinking negatively. Specific anxiety is the result of thinking negatively about something you can describe. Something you can describe. Or it's called state anxiety. State anxiety is a conscious process where you are aware of the problem. Now, state anxiety, you know the situation is there. You know you're an alcoholic. You know you're a drug addict. You know? Okay, so what is that? State anxiety, because you already know you're in that state. You're in that state, amen? For example, some people are anxious about taking tests. Me, I can't stand taking tests. Even as an instructor, I don't get a test. I can't. I know the stuff up, down, backward, and forward. But as soon as I see a question on a test, <laughs> I fell my exam for the college to fly into this air base three times. And I finally had to turn my anxiety over to God. Great example. And what happened? My last money. I said, God is either for the family or you want to make me pass this thing. What do you do? I drove all the way out to Dothan, went to the university, and passed. Amen. Because I could not focus on the test. Spend $1,200 trying to take this thing, and it would have only cost me a couple hundred if I would not been anxious. Amen. But, do God, I made it. You have to teach me a lesson. Let me teach me a lesson. All right, for example, some people are anxious about taking a test. Talking to the opposite sex, y'all see a fine woman or a fine man, you get anxious over it. Oh, I like him. Oh, he coming up with me. You know, that kind of stuff. Oh, man, she's too fine for me. You know, I've been into I never approached one. But I swear, for two inches, I never approached one. Never. I wait till they approach me. They approach me, then I know I ain't got a reason to be anxious. But me looking at them and saying, I can go on baby. It just never worked. Just never worked. Um, people riding on the airplane. I used to do that too. That was before they shut it down like they did. Because you know, years ago I traveled all around the United States as a tech. And the first thing I had to have before I got on the airplane was two things. A pack of cigarettes that you could smoke on the back of and an eight ball of cocaine. Because I knew I had a lot of alcohol on the plane. And I would get on the back of that plane and I would snort half of that eight ball up and wait for that plane. Sometimes, even before the plane took off, and the runway used to take me out. But I'd be sitting up there buzzing. But it was company money. I spent the company money to get high, let it know. Because I wasn't getting on that plane unless I was buzzed. Not me. Because if I was going to die, I was going to die numb. <laughs> That's what it. But that led me to the point of total, total addiction. Because I went from snorting that stuff to putting a hole in the middle of my nose to the day, which is a reminder to never do it again. I got a third hole right here. From being drunk, sticking a straw in the coat, and pow! Because my favorite drink was Hennessy and beer. And if I didn't eat without that day, I'd drink a fifth of Hennessy and drink some beer and didn't have no coke. 
As soon as I got the coat, because I can't stand being drunk, I stuck it in the thing and went bam! And all this blood fell out. I didn't feel a thing. But from that moment on, trying to sniff it, big round boogers were coming my nose that were so painful. Trying to get them out the horn, y'all. So I had a little carpet. So I went from snorting to smoking. Right. Yeah, exactly. Because I'm scared of needles. It was too painful to snort, man. So I had to smoke. And to this day, this thing has gotten bigger. I'm getting ready to see a plastic surgeon now, but now they got the technology. Back in the 80s, they didn't have the technology to fix it. Right. I just went to a doctor, now they got the technology to put my garbage back. But every single day of night, because I work in technology in the air conditioning, my nose is just messed up. It hurts like you would not believe. Mm. But that's a reminder to never go back. Amen. Amen. It's just like Jacob who wrestled with the Lord. Do you know after he wrestled with the Lord, he had a limp for the rest of his life? See, you can't wrestle with God and come out unscathed. <laughs> Amen. 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 Paul didn't come out unscathed. Come on. So, from now on, I know never again. Never again. But God's going to take care of me. Amen. Y'all didn't know that I had a third hole. Huh? No. See? Oh, you did that. Amen. Amen. What do you say? What do you say? Resulting in 
the threatening events will demonstrate themselves in systems such as sweating, especially in the palms. Anybody ever sweat their palms a lot? I used to say, boy, that means I'm going to get some money. Then no, I just itching. <laughs> <laughs> uh, high, heavy breathing, fast, quick hearted beat, uh, quick flashing thoughts, tightness in the chest and other muscles, and near panic feeling. Now, come on. Oh. This is because anxiety speeds up some internal systems and turns on other systems which prepare the body for an emergency. This danger is the consistently putting the body, mind, and emotions through this emergency process, especially when it's false alarm triggered by negative thoughts. Now, how many of you know that's crack? Crack does that to you. I have to stop and take a break. I'm reading about crack cocaine here. I'm reading about methamphetamine here. I'm reading about everything that speeds us the heck up. The thing that's going to give you a heart attack or a stroke. I watched the man back in Philadelphia, he didn't start smoking crack when he was 60. You know how long he started? Stop. In one year, his lungs got full with fluid, he was laying on a bed, he was dead in the next year. He went until 60 to smoke crack. Spent his, his whole retirement in one year. Had a beautiful home in a Went over there, he couldn't get out the bed after his lungs. Because you know crack puts fluid on your lungs and you eternally drown. Y'all didn't know that? Every time you suck it, it puts fluid in your lung. It dehydrates you from your water, and you drown. And those who are listing their, their blood splitting, you're worse than the guy smoking a crack. Y'all think y'all need the weather? I'm just facing the weed. No, you ain't. You're hitting it straight to your lung like it's a bucket of water. I'll be laughing. I used to watch the guy take 10 bags, come on now, and lace his joint. No, man, I ain't like that. I don't want to hit that type of thing. No, you fool. You just lace 10 rocks right in a row. As soon as you suck it with the residue of the weed and everything else, it's going straight to your lung and sit there and go like, whoop. Then you get pneumonia and you die. Hello. I needed to stop there and say that because this freaked me out. That's what happens to you. That's what happened. Thanks for telling me. Amen. It is important to understand that when the body, mind, and emotions are put into this emergency mode, other normal functions stop or slow down. There are certain drugs that turn the body, mind, and emotions on like anxiety drugs. Such of when the same symptoms are sweating palms, heavy breathing, quick heart rate, tight muscles, especially in the chest area, and quick flashing thought, just like anxiety. These drugs increase or turn up a person's internal operations. They also interfere with other normal operations such as sleeping and eating. It can never sleep smoking. They make a person nervous, anxious, and even paranoid. Skip scene. Can you think of any drug that do this? Can you name such one? I guess we just talked about it. Crack! Methamphetamine! Speed! I ain't never had a joint, there you go, I ain't never had a joint slow me down. I mean, speed me up, brother. I ain't never had alcohol speed me up. When I was younger, we used to pop something called Black Beauties. Amen. Diet pills. Take four or five people. Talking about we losing weight. <laughs> And this big 300 pound dude, they found all this crap on him. And they said, Why you got all this crap? Well, I'm trying to lose weight. Still for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bought it because I'm trying to lose weight. <laughs> Amen. All right. If your answer was crack cocaine or crystal meth, etc., then you're correct. I knew I knew. Mm -hmm. That is why these drugs are called uppers or stimulants. They stimulate certain internal operations and up the level of the operation for other internal functions. Just like anxiety, they create a false emergency alarm and turn on our emergency system. They cause damage because they, because they are in control. Because they are in control. Normal function is not possible when you're on these things. I know that's right. I thought I would be good. I have to laugh because my eyes were buggy, my cheeks were sucked in. 
right? And I couldn't control myself. Yeah, man, I'm on it. Yeah, yeah, I'm on it. Everything all right. Not when you're digging your ear when you want to crack. Woo! Uh, come on, come see. I pick blood out of my ear. How many pulled your hair out while you want to crack? Woo! You just sit there, just yanking your hair. I used to sit there and take hair off every part of my body. That's how deep it got with me. If there was some hair on me, I was pulling it out. From the first day, it was in the back of my neck. Second day, I was pulling it wherever I could find it. Third day, I saw snakes. Come on. Yeah, I was smoking a lot, dude. I was, I was smoking a lot. I told the floor now. And see, I know, and don't let a roach or anything walk past me. It was just, just impossible. You was, the roach was getting shot. The roach was getting a bullet. Just that simple. Pow! Just get it. I shot so many holes in the wall, you would not believe. Thank God my family wasn't there when I was shooting. They came home and said, where are these holes? And I just said, something happened. You know, I made up some story. But they didn't know I had a couple times, but I shot them. Anything moved, I shot. Pow! Paranoid, anxiety. Come on. Yeah. Right, come real quick. Uh, the, the, you're, you're the um, you read your Bible a lot in the right house, right? Oh, read it all the time. I did not. Here's the question. When you got a hit and read Revelation, did it scare you? No. What it did, let me tell you what it did. It, uh, you know what? I take that back. It did for fear. Mm -hmm. It did for fear. Because it put the fear of God to the point, you know, God, why don't you just kill me? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm tired of living like this. Kill me, Lord. You keep feeding me. Here I am reading the Bible, getting revelation. But the problem was, the more I read it, the soberer I got. Y'all ain't hear me. I hear you. The more I took the Bible in the crack house or in a private room with me to get high, I hit, got it, read, so. I was spending too much money to be sober. You can't read God's word and remain sober. If you can, you're better than me. You're better than me. That's why people used to say, you're crazy, you just read the Bible and all that while you're getting out of the I was in it, man. I'm so glad I did that because now I know if I hadn't done it in my own reflection of the things I've been through, I'd have been dead. The stuff I did, my heart should have been blown up. My lungs should already be destroyed. I should be walking around with oxygen. That's how much I used to do because I was trying to kill myself. Amen. And I had the money to do it. I saw people only smoke a couple hundred dollars and wind up in the hospital OD. I would be smoking five, six hundred, seven hundred dollars. And one time I got ten thousand dollars from a 401k. I took it out and was gone, man, and smoked or close to three thousand dollars in one night. One, uh, not, well, not one night, because I went in there one night. When I came out, I didn't know it was Tuesday. But I had went in there Friday. Didn't see the sun come up or down. All I knew was I was coming out, and my money was home. I needed to go get more. Came out. What day is it? Tuesday. I missed two days of, two days of work. Got fired. Didn't call in. Family was hunting for me. Because you lose on track of everything. Man. But I was trying to die. And I'm like, Lord, why didn't you kill me? I was meant to go do some work. Amen. And so are you. You don't y'all wonder why y'all ain't there. Amen. All the stuff you've been through, don't you wonder why you're not there? Just think about it. Just think about it. All right, where does anxiety come from? Um, time is short. Let's hit some uh, scriptures. I think y'all got the, the gist on anxiety. Amen? Let's look at some anxiety verses, some SRTs to stop our anxiety from coming. But I did have some stuff on where to come from, and the final thing would have been, what should I do with, oh, I'm going to read this one here, I'm sorry. What should I do, because it's a very short paragraph, what should I do with my anxiety and worry? Here we go. If I should not drink or do drugs to cope with my anxiety and not repress it, because it will eventually, what, kill me. That's what we just talked about. What do I do with my, with my anxiety?